Hello, Lizzie here, and today I'm going to show you how to make Myra. And isn't she one to be admired as well? Sorry, cracking a joke there. Um, but it's a nice, slim, crossbody pouch bag. Okay, so um, the strap is long enough to be a crossbody, but actually I'll give you the instructions if you would just want to make it into a shoulder bag. Um, there is a zip pocket on the front, so you've got that zip pocket going across here. Let me show you, let me undo it. So there, you've got a, a nice secure zip pocket there. And situated behind, you've got another pocket. So you've got two pockets on the front there. And then inside, you just about see it, you've got a, an insert um, zipped pocket as well for something, you know, money maybe. It's not a very big pocket, um, but you can obviously make it bigger if you want to. Um, but it uses the, uh, the sizes of this pocket here to make it so it's quite easy it's quite an easy pattern to cut so um the straps it's just one long thin strap um attached to the side seams it just there's no hardware that's what i'm trying to say there's no hardware to close this either now that on my part was totally deliberate um i just wanted it to be a nice little pouch that you can have cross body sit on your hip and have just to sort of dip in and out of. So hence the zips if you wanted to put money um, in this bag as well. But great if you're maybe going to the beach and uh, you just wanted to carry a few bits and pieces with you. Your mobile phone could fit in here. But it, I mean, it could fit in there as well. But you've got those two zip pockets for security. So it's really a nice make. Um, it's a nice size as well. And if you wanted to, of course, you could make it into more glamorous fabric. So you could perhaps use it on an evening, maybe if you're going, you know, when you're going abroad and you're, you're on the promenade and you want something really little glamorous, maybe you could make it out sparkly fabric that would look amazing um, now we've used a lightweight decoville which is it's more than an interfacing in some way so our regular h250 that i use it's more than that but not enough that it's awkward to use the the lining and the pockets are all stabilized with h250 so it's quite a sturdy bag um, and decoville on the front of the pocket and the back and the front of the bag i mean that the back is plain isn't it a lovely fabric um, and i'm using something glorious for the the one i'm making now so this is myra and this is pattern number two of this month's patterns the other pattern is the the hat behind us the bucket hat which is just delightful and the fabric i'm going to use now will nearly match the pink one you'll you'll you won't think it will but there is pink in the fabric <laughs> so i'm thinking it's gonna match i don't know we'll say, wait and see anyway let's get going it's quite an easy make. We've got the, the zips to do, um, but other than that, it's quite an easy make. Um, the first thing we're going to do is make up that pocket that goes on the front, because that's done, it's almost like you're making a pouch to attach to the, the, the front of the, the, the body, you know, the body of the bag. So um, if you're used to making pouches, it's actually quite an easy process. So that's the fabric I'm choosing. Now I know you're gonna say, well, that's nothing like the hat in the background, but I want you to have a look that there's pink flower bits here. The, <laughs> the center of the flowers in that particular instance are pink. So I'm kind of stretching the boundaries a bit. So the front pocket has the Decaville light on there and it's you can see it's flexible, um, but it's it gives it rigidity without making it too much. Um, I'm not a keen lover of foam and I will avoid it if I can, but of course you could make this with foam if you wanted to. It, it gives the same sort of structural look. Okay, so we have several bits to the pocket. As you can imagine, we're making up a pouch, really, but we're not stitching those uh, three seams down, so the two side seams and the bottom. We're not stitching all of that. That goes into the body of the bag. All will become clear. So let's move our bits and bobs out of the way. So I've got the lining, which is a pink, um, to the pocket, and that goes on the inside. So let me just show you that. Um, it goes on where, where this bit, where the cream bit is, that's the pink. OK, so you've got that different lining and the, the inside is the cream. Again, it's going to be pink in the bag we're making. But we also want to make it really neat by, if I can get my hand in there, by lining it like that. You don't have to, but I just wanted it to be really 
classy and I think that's what it is so uh, we're gonna, we need a zip so I've got a zip here in that gorgeous mustard color to match um, it won't match the pink but let's not worry about that too much um, we need to put the lining in as well so let's make this sort of faux pouch up if you like so we'll just change to a zipper foot and so we're ready to rock and roll okay so um a zip sandwich it's um the right side of your best fabric let's try and do it so you can see it right side of your best fabric right side of your zip facing down like that i know my zip is longer you know i always do longer zips and then the lining which is not the pink lining this is going to be your internal pocket lining um, goes right side down over the zip so if i perhaps show you from the side view it might be easier so let's let's do it the other way around so you've got the the right side of the lining showing you can see that quite clearly you've got the right side of the zip facing up i'll just get my slider out of the way and this is why i always cut my zip far too long so it just gets it out of the way we don't have to worry about it um, and then the right side of our fabric isn't that glorious facing down now look this is directional so just keep your thoughts on the fact that it's directional so we're just going to flip this over because this is the top of the pocket so we want the zip to go on the top there so right sides down and you can see i've cut my interfacing whether it's the decaville or your regular interfacing i've cut it um, a quarter of an inch shorter all the way around so we don't have that bulk in all of the seams and then we're just going to stitch that together now by all means pin it use your quilting clips and um, get it so you're, you're in a position to actually stitch it together comfortably um, i'm just going to stitch it as it is because that's what i do um, but you just need to make sure that all of your layers are lined up so just when you have a look at it before you stitch just to make sure everything is lined up look so that's the right side of your lining fabric the right side of your zip you see the teeth there of the zip and the right side of your fabric facing down and we're just going to stitch that down regular stitch length of 2.4 is fine and uh, off we go now because um the stabilizer is has been cut smaller this what you won't necessarily at this stage follow that or, or when you're putting this zip in because we're actually doing a bigger seam allowance i'll show you when i've done and you'll know what i'm talking about if you want to stick to the quarter of an inch that's absolutely fine um, but i like to stitch fairly near to the teeth of the zip so i'll just let, let you see that so you can see that my my stitching where's the end of the thread i thought i've missed a th some stitches there um you can see that it's just a little bit onto the deck of it and that's perfectly fine so the other thing we're going to do i'm just checking out my pocket i need to top stitch that that front pocket um, and again all i would suggest you do is to bring all your layers together and pin and that holds everything in place um, and it keeps the lining where it's supposed to be instead of curling up and of course press it iron it make sure that it's it's lying beautifully together so just pop a couple of pins in and by doing this it means that all of the layers are staying where they should be there we go just line that up again so i'll just finger press that so that's what it looks like at the moment i've got my zip slider on the end that's what it looks like on the back and, and i like i say i would like you to put that under a dry hot iron and give it a press but for speed we'll just we'll just carry on now you may like your zip um, teeth sort of nearer to your seam you know you don't want to have a lot of zip tape showing and that's fine it, the pocket will be there's no difference will by losing what um, not quite maybe an eighth of an inch um, on the 
on the zip tape it, it won't matter to the depth of the pocket hardly anything for you to worry about so if you want to make sure that your fabric your your seam line here touches almost the zip tape that's fine that's fine you do that and um, my zipper phone won't zipper foot won't allow me to do that and i'm happy with that i love this zipper foot <laughs> If you can ever love a zipper foot i love that one right so we're going to do the same again for the other side so this time we've got the pink to go um inside let me show you so instead of the cream we're now going to do pink so it's almost like the other side of the pouch so it has to be the nice fabric okay it's not the lining fabric the lining fabric is inside there so again, we're going to put right sides together with our zip teeth facing, right side of my fabric going down. Let me, let me do it so you can see it better. So there's my right side. There's obviously the right side of my zip, right side of my fabric facing down on top of there, and then the lining face up underneath. And if you're not sure, just rewind. <laughs> But let me show you on this side camera. It's not so easy when you put the second one in to really show you well. But there's my best side, my right side of my lining to the pocket, really. And then if I lift all my layers up that I've just stitched, there's the right side of my lining and the right side of my zip. OK, so as long as yours looks like that, you can't go wrong. So again, we're just going to stitch all these layers together and I, like I said even because this is um, stabilized as well with a sort of medium weight iron-on stabilizer um, it does really give it rigidity and to be honest I was thinking about this you could actually make this a reversible bag and um, we'll, we'll talk about that right at the end so there's the the second side and there's your two lining pieces on the back so you can see it's just like making a pouch um, so I'm going to take these pins out now just for a moment now you could if you wanted to you could top stitch let me get that right you could top stitch this other side which we might as well do to keep it neat because you still don't want the zip slider to catch on any of that fabric so again just line up your fabrics this is quite an important part because when we go to attach it to the the body of the bag you want all of your raw edges to sit fairly well together i mean it's not a big deal if they don't but you want them to be fairly accurate so i've pinned that other side i've pinned you can see i've pinned all the layers together and it pulls that lining to where it should be so when we do our top stitch it's perfect and I just hold it. I just hold it and pull it. And it goes through a treat. But a, but a, a, a press, you know, with a dry iron is good. OK, so that's both sides done. And what you're going to do now is just literally fold it in half. There we are. So there is the front pocket done. Now, in the pattern, I've suggested that you top stitch or sorry, you baste all the way around to hold those layers together. But we're going to we might as well put it straight onto the front of the bag, in which case we don't have to worry about basting this and then basting again, because that's really what we're going to do. Um, make sure you move your slider. You can keep these bits on for the moment um, you don't have to cut them off. It's up to you it's going to they're going to come off almost next but what i want you to do is to get all these layers that you've just stitched to sit together really nicely okay so that's they're layered up beautifully now and we're going to get the front part of our bag again don't forget we're using directional fabric well you might not be but i am i'm kind of talking to myself really so just get all your layers and I start with a corner so I know all of those layers are sitting nicely. Um, you maybe use um, quilting clips now because you've got quite a few layers going on. 
and just make sure that they're sitting nicely. Um, right, so let's do the other side. So again, line them all up. And there we go. When you come to go over your zip teeth, if your zip is already open, you just want to make sure that those zip teeth are sitting nicely on top of each other. Sometimes it's a bit of a struggle for a machine to go through those layers, but um, ideally that's how you want it to be. So if we look at the side camera here, you'll see that they're all lined together beautifully, that all of your um, edges meet all, all at the bottom there. They're all meeting really nicely can see the quarter inch cut off there and like I say you can trim off those um, zip um, bits of tape if you want to but all I'm going to do is I'm going to baste from about here all the way up to about here it's cut, just holding all those layers together so I'll just change back to my regular foot we will need the zipper foot again so I'll keep it handy We've got to do that zip on the inside. So, oh, I've just, just put my zipper foot back on again. Let's get the right one. So, <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so let's just pop that under the machine. Now, the seam allowance for this bag is a quarter of an inch. That's perfectly acceptable. So when you're doing this basting, it wants to be less than quarter of an inch. But we don't want that stitching showing when we turn through. So just be aware of that. And if you want to, draw a line so you know exactly where you're going with this. So i have gone over my zip teeth. So I'm gonna take my quilting clips out can up the stitch length as well so this is just a case of um, just grabbing all of those layers so they sit nicely whizzing along the bottom I think it's so lovely making something that you think is going to be a holiday item that you're going to take away with you. It doesn't matter whether it's a staycation, you know, that you're going you're to stay in your own country, or whether you're going to go abroad, you know, when it's all nice and safe. It doesn't matter, as long as you enjoy the process of making the bag, which I think you're going to. So there we are, stitched all the way around, all the way down, across and up. So we'll just... Um, We'll cut that zipper tape off. I nearly did it with my best scissors. The trouble is I know now my, my paper scissors are getting really, really blunt. You can see, it just doesn't want to cut. There we go. Right, so there's the front of our bag made. Isn't it glorious? And that zip really works well, doesn't it? So we've got the, the lining in there. So that looks lovely, doesn't it? And that it's, it's very clean and crisp. That's the idea of it. You're going to enjoy using it. And then inside, we've got that pop of pink. You can see, if I bend that back, there we go. Maybe you can see, I'm just trying to get you so you can see a pink flower, but that you can all see, all you can see is in the navy blue ones. But anyway, you've got the pink there, which is just glorious. Right, so the next stage is to actually um, do the inside pocket the other inside zip pocket now this is this is really easy to do okay um, i'll give you all the measurements in the pattern so you mustn't worry but what you're going to do first of all is that you're going to lay your big piece um let's do it oh that is the right side and your little smaller piece it's the same size as the front pocket as so i said about cutting is much easier because you've only got the two sizes to cut plus the strap so this is the piece you want, but you want it um, right sides down. Okay, so you're going, and can you see right side onto wrong side? So 
we're going to measure and I'm going to write on here so I can see. Let's do it on the side camera. In fact, let me do it so it's upside down. So this this um, this is going to this is the top of my bag here. So I'm going to measure down the the amount that I need that's shown in the pattern. You've got a, a picture with the actual bag that I made uh, with these lines drawn on. And then we need the same distance either side here. So we'll just measure that. And again, yeah, it's got it spot on. So if we lift that up, you can see I've just made a mark. You don't have to do that, but I'm doing it so it's a visual for you. Let's get it so that's the right way around. So I've measured it from the top down, and there's the top of my fabric there. And this is equal distance either side. If I do it like that, maybe it, it looks a bit better. OK, so from this edge here, from this raw edge, not the edge of my interfacing, from the raw edge, I'm measuring down um, another inch. So I'll just mark that along here. That's just It's just a bit of a guide, really. And then I also want to measure an inch in from this raw edge here. So I'll just make a mark like that. Made a nice little square. And let's do that again. Let's line up with this mark here. So there. So there's my inch in here and my inch in there. OK, you can see those two marks. Now, what I want to do is to draw a straight line from there to there. So it's the one that we've just measured before from the top. It was an inch. So I've drawn my line going across. And then I need to measure a quarter of an inch and I'm going to draw a line again. Not strictly necessary, but it's nice to have a bit of a guide. So there's my quarter inch. But the one that I really want is the next one. So you could just measure half an inch. Um, let's just get that lined up. It's habit. It's habit to do it like that. Um, and then just draw your bars across. OK, now. What I strongly suggest you do is to get some pins. And pin all these layers together because you're going to stitch around that box. So let's just put one straight in the center. If I turn it so it's now a correct way for you, you can see what this looks like. And like I said, there's a picture in the pattern to help you. So you've measured this from here to here and then you've measured from there to there. And then the same with this. I mean, I could say what that exact measurement is, but sometimes it's better to build up slowly so you know that you've got it in the right place. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to actually stitch along the box. We're not we're not bothered about this centre line. If anything, that's just for me to, to cut. But we, we're going to stitch along the top, down here, along the bottom and up. OK, now I want you to make it a small stitch. Because we're going to cut our box, we want our stitching to be really uh, really small, really neat, uh, really strong because we're going to turn it through and it wants to be nice. It wants to be a nice, well, as boxy as you can get it. Sometimes it's difficult because at the end of the day, I'm using two layers of linen and two layers of stabiliser, the H250, which is quite, um, well, it's a medium weight. So I just want you to think about that because that's quite a bit to push through. I mean, it's fine. And you might want to use perhaps a lesser weight interfacing. Uh, you see how you go. You see what suits you. I can tell you what suits me. <laughs> but that's not always what you like. That's just I just want to make sure I get right into that corner where I started, which I have now. And I'm now just going to go along a few stitches. I don't do a back stitch. Just go over the top of my original stitches. Okay, 
So now we've, we've stitched around the box and if you want to you can iron that away, it makes no difference. But you might want to iron away the marks on the front, on the good piece, if you have made marks. You don't have to. Um, it's just a nice visual for you when you see me do it. So let's just iron it all away. Um, the next thing you're going to do is actually cut. Now you're going to cut on that centre line. See that centre line running through there? You're going to cut on that. When you get to the corners, you're going to do a little V. So I'll do it and then I'll show you. So I fold my fabric in half. And I just do a little snip because I'm working blind to the back. I can't see what I'm doing there, but I can see on the front. So I just do a little snip and then I cut through and I go up to about a quarter of an inch away from the edge of my stitching. So I'll show you when, I, when I've done it, but I'm just cutting through that centre line. Before I iron all my marks out, I'll show you. It might make a bit more sense. Sometimes it's difficult to see the stitching. So let's just show you here. <laughs> So you can see what I've done. You can see the V's very, very clearly. And you can see all of that. Now you could, if you wanted to, trim some of this away. Not, not um, all of it. I would just trim one layer away, perhaps, to get rid of some of the bulk. So let's just iron all that now. And we'll take these marks off. In fact, I'll keep that on because we'll we'll iron the box that we've made. So that's what we've done. It wasn't too bad, was it? Got lots of bits on there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to post it through. So all of this fabric, I'm going to post through the hole. So literally just do that. Just bring it all the way through. And then you've just got to kind of wriggle it. it. It won't want to do it because it's going against everything it wants to do because it's already been stiffened but it will do. So if we, if we go to the side you'll see, there we go, just give it a little wriggle. Get those corners out. You see how that looks. As this is the bit that you really want to try and make super straight because that's where your zip's going to go and you want it to be neat, you really do. So just spend a moment pushing those, that seam out and ideally you're going to steam press this because you want it to look lovely and you want it to lay straight and I, I'm a bit naughty because I use one of those big big old steam presses that you buy for doing your laundry with, you know, your sheets and your bedding and all that sort of thing. A great big thing but it's amazing. See that would just clamp that down and press it flat in a, in a jiffy but we'll, we'll work with what I've got. It's picking up lots of stuff. So. Let's just do that on the front. We want it as neat as we can. And like I said, there's a lot of bolt going on. So can you see how it's just it just lifts up slightly here. But if you steamed that, if you steamed that, let me show it properly, that, that would actually lie flat. Now, if you wanted to make this a reversible bag, I would spend a moment making sure that that was really super duper flat. But it, this is going on the inside of my bag as the lining. So by the time I put my zip in and stitched it and popped it in my bag, it's going to be totally fine. So we've got our zip. Now this time I'm going to use a navy blue and you think, why on earth aren't you using pink? But you, you, maybe you forget about my fabric. My fabric. I've got the pink, I've got the navy blue and I've got the mustard. So I'm trying to make it work, but if it's a reversible, maybe you don't want to go with navy blue. So it's going to go through the letterbox. OK, you're going to make sure that your zip slider is sitting in that letterbox. And you see how that looks. Sometimes it's difficult to see with the light, but um, it's sitting in there nicely, I'm sure. 
when my John edits this video, it'll show beautifully. But to make sure that it's sitting in the right place, I'm going to use Quilter's tape. Um, I'm going to put it onto the zip um, because um, I, I can really position things really beautifully with Quilter's tape. Um, and I'm going to put it on the edge of my zip tape. So I'll put it on and then I'll show you. I'll go further than I need to because I can always remove it. Just check and make sure that, oh yeah, it's fine, far too much. Let's cut a bit off. Okay, so we'll do the same the other side. You don't have to do this, but you know what? We've got these tools to help us. You might as well just spend a moment. And even if you're a really experienced stitcher, it's something again that you might want to just do. It makes life easier. So there's the tape. You can see it quite clearly. And I've put it on the right side of the zip. So my zip slider is just here. Can you see that? So if I take the backing paper off and this is a wash away not that it makes a jot of difference if this is for a bag well it is um, but if you are going to put this into the, the quilters tape if you're going to put it into clothing that you're going to wash it will wash away but most of the time you've covered it up with a seam haven't you so I'm just placing this over the top I'm going to move my slider a little bit place this over the top and just make sure my zip teeth um, are sitting right in the centre and, and, and you'll find that the centre of the, your, of your letterbox um, it tends to bow out, bow out, it tends to bow out, go like that. <laughs> so you just want to bring that in and that's where the tape really works well. So spend a moment adjusting it's usually the centre part that I have to adjust. Yeah, I just there's another little bend in it. Ah, that's better. So if we look at it now, you can see how that looks. So all we're going to do is stitch around the box, the letter box. We're just going to top stitch. I'm going to put that zipper foot back on. Sometimes you can get away with not putting the zip, zipper foot back on again, especially because we're stitching quite a way away from the zip teeth. But just to be safe, uh, I'll just put that foot back on. So even though we've wriggled a bit and messed about, that zip is still staying absolutely in place. So you're going to stitch about a sixteenth of an inch away from your folded edge of the fabric. And I just want to make sure that that's positioned correctly. Sometimes your stitch length will determine if you end up in the right place for the box. It just has a little thread there. That's it. I don't want it travelling. Right, so let's go along the box and if it's moved or if it's wriggled, just give it a little adjustment, that's better. And when you get to the zip slider, you might want to just bring up your zipper foot or whatever foot you're using, bring your needle up a little bit and just move it out of the way. And again, I just want to make sure that we're in the right place with the needle and do adjust if you need to. Do adjust. So just coming along that other side. And because we've put the tape right on the edge of the zipper tape, the quilter's tape on the edge of the zipper tape, um, you won't see any of it. If you put it nearer to the teeth and you're not stitching that far into the teeth, you'll see it. So just be aware of that. So we're just coming back to where we started. Um, and I'm just going to run over those first couple of stitches. That's all I need to do. 
Oh, hi there. Thank you for stopping by. I was going to talk to you about the Gold Club, actually, and I'm preparing for our Facebook Live tonight because every week on Facebook in the Gold Sewing Group, we actually do other things like mm, free motion embroidery tonight. So the Gold Online Sewing Group, what is all that about? Well, if you go to my website, lizzycurtis.com, you'll see the sign up tab. Click on that. You get a choice of membership. But what you do get every month is two different super patterns especially for you and, and do you know what when they go in the shop the next month they're 4 99 each so this is an absolute bargain for five pounds about six dollars twenty something like that you're getting those two full patterns with video tutorials as well so why don't you join up today and join the online sewing group which is known as the gold sewing group i'll see you there bye so there we go. So that's our pocket stitched in or our zipper is stitched in. I'll show you the side camera. It's probably a much, much better angle to do that. And this is what the back looks like. OK, so I'm going to cut. I'm going to use my best scissors. I'm sorry. I'm going to cut my zip tape away. I don't need that tape as long as that. Just make sure you have put your slider. <laughs> in there right okay so that's now our pocket done but we all we need to do is stitch it together to make a pocket so bring it up the bottom edge up to the top edge get that lined up um, let's put some clips in and all you're doing is stitching around those three sides there's no need to stitch along the folded edge and you're just taking away some of the um, the pocket if you do that Let's get it lined up. That's better. So you could iron this if you wanted to. It's just my iron's still warm. So let's give it a little crease. So let me just make this quite clear where you're stitching. I think you'll, I think you'll get it anyway. So that's what it looks like. So you're stitching from the bottom here where the fold is up, across and down. And as you stitch, you're going to move your bag part out of the way. So you can see how that works. When you get up there, you just move that part down and stitch across the top. And then you move that side out of the way and stitch down there. So it's quite easy, isn't it? So let's get going on that. If I use my other machine, they're so quick to change the feet. But I love this machine. It only does a straight stitch, but that's all we need most of the time, isn't it? I've got oil on my hands now. I oiled this the other day. I cleaned it and oiled it. And yeah, anyway, enough said. So a quarter of an inch seam allowance again. So you can see it's not a massive pocket. Personally, I think it's enough. Um, you, you may want to make it longer, in which case just lengthen your fabric by, I don't know, four inches perhaps even. But just remember you, you lose half of that because you're folding the fabric. So we go right across the top. And just come to that last bit and we're just folding the bag under as we go. Just getting all that other main bag fabric out of the way. So, yeah. Let's move our clips. So that's what you end up with. And this is from the front. So you can see if you gave that a steam, those little creases there at the corners, they would go. They would definitely go. A steam or a damp cloth, anything like that. And it will just those little puckers in. So, yeah, something you can do. Right. So we've got our front made like that. We've got the lining piece to go on that one. Don't forget the pocket goes at the back. So remember the order of that. We've got the back and then we've got that part that goes to the back. So try to remember that those two go together 
because you well it doesn't matter if you have the zip on the front panel but generally speaking you have them at the back of the bag don't you so the next thing we need to do is to sort out our strap and this from memory is 55 inches long so quite a length now it's not very wide because we just want a thin little it's a crossbody strap so we don't want anything that's going to get in the way there's no hardware it's so just gorgeous and if you want to you know what you can just tuck it away and just use it as pop it under your arm type of situation there we are look and that'll pop under there and it's it's done and dusted isn't it so um with that we're going to fold it to the middle so i'm going to do a little bit of it and then what i'll do is i'll go away finish it off stitch it and then i'll show you so if we look at the side camera here this is this is quite a normal technique for anything like this um, and the four layers of fabric I don't want it stabilized I only want it where we're using the fabric itself to give the strap a little bit of rigidity not very much but it, we don't really need a stabilizer so iron your fabric as you go fold it in half lengthwise obviously down the whole length so there we are that's folded in half you can see what that looks like fold those outer edges to that folded line that you've or the crease that you've just made do the same the other side and then you're going to bring those together so those are your creases can you see how that looks you're making like a bias binding aren't you really so if i hold that like that you can see and then you're folding together so you can tell it makes a really narrow strap but that's all we need for the bag so i'm going to go away and um, iron all this stitch it all because we're just doing stitching down both sides even though it's small still keep to that stitching both sides and um, i'll be back with you in just a moment so i've stitched the strap just as i said folding those edges in folding again to get a half inch strap i know it's quite small but that's exactly how i wanted it to be you can make it bigger if you want to um, and then we're going to attach it to our bag but first of all we need to sort of kind of build the bag up we're going to pop this into the side seams so when you do put the strap in do make sure that it's all straight it's all straight and it's not twisted but what we're going to do is put our back and our front together so there's our front with a zipper pocket and there's our back make sure if you're using directional fabric it's going the right way so right sides together and we're going down the side seams and the bottom quarter of an inch seam allowance make sure all your pieces line up and of course you can pin make sure your um, zip slider is out of the way of where you're stitching because you don't want to catch that with your your foot or your needle so just get that out of the way pin it as i said use your quilting clips so don't forget also you're going back over that zip again so as you get to that zip just slow down a little bit allow your machine to go over down to the bottom and across that bottom edge again line up all your pieces now there's a lot of layers going on here and i'm going to talk to you about how you can deal with the lining um, because it's all very stabilized and stiff um, and it's the lining you can make a difference with um, and I'll, I'll talk to you about that when we get to it so I'm just coming up that other side now and I'm just making sure my fabric is sitting beautifully just going over my zip so going slowly just again make sure it's sitting straight and then a back stitch to finish so it's nice and strong so there is my my bag body outer done i'm going to snip my corners away but be careful because this is all um, pressure points if you like so let's turn it through um, and you'll be able to uh, probably deal with this better if you turn it through now i mean we've still got a little bit of work to do where you might find it a little bit stiff but just work at it 
Um, it's just one of those things because we're using that Decaville, especially on the you know the, on the pocket as well as the bag. It's going to take a moment to get all of that body through, and you'll get to a point where you probably have to get um, a blunt pokey tool to get in there into the corners and really work at it. There we are. We're getting there. So if I get my I'll get my wooden one this time. Doesn't matter which. I've got a nice silver one somewhere. Oh, I can see it. Depends how strong your tools are. Now, because um, because of all the thickness, you may not get that really sharp corner that you're perhaps anticipating, um, and that's because of all the layers. Um, I mean, we've cut away a lot of that Decaville and a lot of that H250. We, you know, we didn't have it in the in the quarter inch seam. Um, we've cut the corners off, so it shouldn't be too bad. But just um, cut yourself a little bit of slack if it doesn't quite go as you would like it to. So just give that a nice sort of press with your hands. <laughs> Get your hands inside that pocket. I've got a little thread there, which will really will have to go. So that's what it looks like now with the uh, bag to put together. But obviously we need to put the lining on. But before we do that, I want to put the straps on. So with it like that, and, and you can have it the other way around if you want to, please do whatever is best for you. So take one end and pop it on the side seam. So if we look at it that way, you can see there's my seam. So it's just going to go across that seam. And we're going to baste that with the machine just to hold it in place. So we'll do that first. And if you've got a, a, a machine with a free arm, brilliant, use it. It's the perfect time. So we've attached one side. So just make sure now that your strap is straight. It'd be so annoying if you finish the bag and notice you've got a twist. And do check it. Um, and you can open up these seams if you want to, but there's not much bulk there because we didn't have any Decaville there. So again, just baste it. A couple of rows of stitches really holds it in place. So now we're going to put our lining together. So exactly the same again. So right sides together. We're just going to stitch along the side. Um, in fact, just the two sides, just the two sides. We're going to leave the whole of that bottom edge open and, and make sure it is the bottom edge. You don't want your zip pocket upside down. So we'll just check again. So just down the sides. A nice back stitch there. And again, just down the side. So with this particular bag, um, as, I, as, as I said before, there's a lot of bulk and when you put the lining inside, your, the corners of your lining may well not go into the corners of your bag. So what you could do, you could round these corners off, okay, just round them off and carry your stitching on about if I get my hand in the right place, about like that. Um, and then just carry your stitching round and, and trim that because then that rounded edge will fit so much easier in the bottom here when you when you put that lining in. I'll keep it as to the pattern though. So with it like that, with the right side inside, we're just going to pop our bag inside there. Don't forget to make sure, um, I think we got it right, is to put the zip to the back. Let's feed that up. That's it. Doesn't want to behave. Make sure that strap is inside. There we go. And just get make sure those side seams are sitting on top of each other. Because if it twists now, it's such a devil to try and straighten up. There we are. Come along. 
that's it it's almost like it's like velcro there we are that's not that's okay now so um i've got <laughs> my right sides together so i've got the right side of my bag to the right side of my lining just check again make sure that you've got the back zip going to the back and you've got the front on the front i think we're okay just checking again right so we're going to now stitch all the way around don't forget we've already got that turning gap that big turning gap at the bottom there and you might find if you don't have a free arm like me i don't have a free arm you might want to stitch from the inside so on this side if you've got a free arm it's easier to slide it in and do it from the top so whichever system you have with your machine then you use it to your advantage like I say I, I don't have a free arm on this machine so I stitch on the inside of the bag so about a quarter of an inch seam allowance again so just get that needle in and now I'm kind of free to manoeuvre all of the layers. Let's just wriggle that a little bit. <laughs> That's it, now we've got it. So just put all those layers together. Like I said, about a quarter of an inch. If you go, so if you stray and it's a little bit more, please don't worry. Just try and match those side seams up because you might notice that. Uh, and because this doesn't have an enclosure, it's something that you might catch your eye every now and again. Make sure it fits as well because you don't want any puckers, especially because we don't have any um, hardware on it. Just work your way around. It's, it is a little awkward. It's not as awkward as foam. <laughs> Let's make sure that your bag sits nice and straight. There we go. And, and actually, if you've, got a, if you've got a walking foot or dual feed foot, please use that because it does make a huge difference when you're sewing layers like this. It means all your layers will stay in place. So back to where we started. That's what it looks like. So all I'm going to do is just bring my lining. You can see now why I turned my bag through because it's much easier to manipulate the lining now than the main bag. And obviously this needs a really, really good press. So that's what you should end up with. You've got your lining and your outer. And this is the one with the zip pocket. You can just see it there. This is the back. This is how it should look. There we go, like that. Like I say, you, you want to give this a press. And press that seam there because we're going to top stitch that. So we want that seam to be as open and as neat as we can get. So to finish off the turning gap, you've got the entire width, which is so easy. Just fold that in by a quarter of an inch or so perhaps make it half an inch that would sit better on the inside of your bag now if you're going to make this bag reversible i want you to think about how to finish this off because you don't want a stitched hem like this on the machine um, i wouldn't even have a hand stitched hem i would think about a trimming of some sort maybe um, that you could add to the bag to make it look really pretty but it's, it's got great possibilities to be a reversible bag. And I'm doing mine a good half an inch. And you'd be surprised how that will still tuck right into the bottom of the bag. So all the way across. Be careful when you come to the seams because of course you've got lots of layers going on and you're going over stabiliser as well. So there we are. <laughs> we stitched right across there. Nice and neat. It's not very often I do my turning gap, but it's easy when it's like this. So now all you're doing is going to push that in. And again, it's stiff. It's, um, yeah, you've got to work at it a little bit. Get your, your Arnold Schwarzenegger muscles out. 
um, because it's it's um, it doesn't want to do what you're telling it to do. It wants just to be nice and straight. It doesn't want to be bent. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just got my hand in there, pushing those corners out. Well, in I should say, right into the corner as best I can. I mean, after a while, they will soften up. They will soften up. I promise. Just push that in. There we go. Not too bad actually. It's not too bad. And when you look inside, you'll see that the corners of the lining just turn in slightly because there's nowhere for them to go. So a curved bottom will make it sit beautifully in there. So now we've got, all we've got left to do is, is the top stitch. So once again, if you've got a free arm machine, just cut this thread. If you've got a free arm machine, you're going to put it on like that. Because we're using a flat bed with no free arm, I'm stitching on the inside, which is absolutely not ideal because I like to see my top stitching on the outside. I'm sorry for licking my fingers there. In fact, I might struggle to do this on the outside. I think I will actually because I'm a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to top stitching. I'm not too worried about what the lining looks like. If you've, if you've pressed it and you've, you've really got that ready it, it should be absolutely fine a bit like when we did the zip you know pulling those layers together um, but if we use our stiletto or our quick unpick we can pull that lining and uh, sorry the seam out so it should be all right let's just up the stitch a little bit that's all good that's all good so just make sure you're not stitching <laughs> the other side of the bag at the same time okay just get that bit in there that's it because we're using quite a neutral thread you, you're not going to see this dramatically you, I mean, you could use a navy blue couldn't you to make it really stand out you'd have to be really good with your top stitching or brave <laughs> Gosh, I'm, I'm going to be really interested to see these being made. I really want to see a lot of these being made. My, my lining is just not doing what I want it to do here. So, but it would have done if I pressed it. So do take that time. I know I go on about it a lot, but it's really important. So I'm just using my stiletto again just to pull that seam out <laughs> such pretty fabric isn't it such pretty fabric now by the time that um, you get to see this video this fabric may not be available there's no point in me giving you links for it because oftentimes it's it's quite a few weeks before you see it and um, more than likely it's not available it's out of stock or it's not it's seasonal as well isn't it some of these okay so there we are so we're done we've top stitched the top I've got a few little threads so it annoy me but I'll try not to look at them um, so there we are that's uh, Myra and you can see the zip is on the back phew it needs a press it needs to go in my machine and, and pressed isn't that gorgeous I love it and of course this is a cross body so it's going to go <laughs> let's see if I can demonstrate it it's going to go across there and it's going to hang quite low on the hip so I would say make sure it's not too long for you I quite like it fairly long this is 55 inches maybe 50 inches is enough um, and again, I've given you all an alternative if you want a just a, a, a regular shoulder bag. A cross, a cross body tends to be a, a little bit longer. So there we are. Apart from a good press, it's done. So we've got our pocket in there. So there's the pink. You can see we've got the lining in there, that pretty pink and the blue zip. I really love how that looks. You've got the pocket here. And then, of course, inside the, the zip pocket, you've got that area as well and that's just a, a basic lining going going in there could make it really something special couldn't you um yeah so that's it done so that is myra so we've got one with little foxes on and of course we pulled the 
put the strap in there, didn't we? And you can see that, I don't know if you can, but you can, can you see the difference between one that's pressed and one that's not? So it does make a difference and I can't, I can't wait to put it in the machine and press it. But isn't it lovely? A really super duper little crossover bag that you can just have on a day trip. Maybe you're going shopping, you just need a small bag inside your coat. So it's hidden flat to your body as well. There's no sort of bulk to it. And it'll prevent you taking um, everything by the kitchen sink in your bag that day. You can just take your essentials. So this is Myra. This is one of my new patterns launched for um, May 2021. So this might be June, July, August, even the next year when you see this. But I think you'll realise it. What a lovely little make it is. And what a great gift as well. So Myra, I hope you make loads.